The Mike Stevens script, also known as Magic in its digital form, is one of the most popular scripts and very fun to execute. This intro video will go over some tips on getting organized, prepping for practice, using the three-fingered method of holding the brush rather than the pencil method, and some basic brush strokes. So let's get started and have some fun. One of the ways that you can um, practice an alphabet, for example, this script, is to take a page, like for example, I took this out of the Mike Stevens Mastering Layout and on the Art of Eye Appeal and blew it up and then grayed it out and had it digitally printed and I put it onto a panel like this and actually I got another one on the other side, another alphabet, and then, um, and then laminate it. This has matte laminate over the top of it. And then you can just brush right over the top of this and uh, wipe off the paint like within about 15, 20 minutes uh, because it starts to set with uh, some lacquer thinner. Just wipe it off like an eraser. It's almost like having a dry erase board, um, but with, you know, the lettering will stay permanently on there because it's underneath the laminate. And um, one of the things I noticed, though, is, uh, well, there's a couple things. One is, in this alphabet, in this book, there is no capital J. There is a lowercase j, but there is no uppercase j. <laughs> so um, one of the things I did was I looked in his um, 99 show, show cards, by Mike Stevens, and I found uh, he actually has a couple of different styles of J that he uses for this um, alphabet, and uh, one of them is on this poster, and it's um, and it's got a kind of like a loop on top and a big loop on bottom, and I noticed that is was used for the the first word of a sentence. Then he has another J that is um, that you that is used kind of mid sentence and it uh, it has it's just basically a swooping stroke on the axis going down with just a you know just a tapered whip uh, off to the left so um, those are the couple of J's that I found in, in his show card book so that was a little helpful um, and also there's no numbers or symbols as reference it as well so uh, one of the things that you can do which was what I did was for 25 bucks you can buy a, the digital version of this font this alphabet um, and so that which has all of the uh, which has all of the symbols numbers and has a capital J and I actually really like whoever did this capital J uh, did a really good job. I really like the way it's shaped and flows. So whoever did this, thank you. It looks great. And so this is the J that I'm going to be using. Uh, just and then it seems to really fit, and it doesn't descend uh, quite so far down. But you can make it descend if you want to. Um, and then it has all the all of the symbols and everything. And what I did, what what I do is I just I just printed this out, and then taped it together so I make this one giant um, uh, you know cheat sheet basically and then uh, I will show actually show you how what I do with this uh, for practicing purposes so that being said um, this is just a nice way to be able to dial in a, a lettering style because basically the goal is to get every single shape and turn and twist and thin and thick into memory, deep memory, so that uh, you can just do this automatically. I did this for a while, until, and, but it's, it is important to wean ourselves off of these things uh, so that we can do them on our own. So do this until you feel like, well, I really got this. this is, I'm really comfortable with the brush strokes and 
thicks and thins and shape of the letter, spacing, all of those things seem to be working. So just go ahead and uh, letter on something else, you know, using guidelines. And what I've noticed is that on this alphabet, um, all of the thins are at the very top, what I call 12 o'clock. So everywhere you see a thin, it's at the 12 o'clock or at the very top, top, top. And it's the reason why is because it's done. It's because of where the br brush begins and how the brush is handled. Um, I do have the 1985 version of uh, Mike Stevens' um, video of uh, lettering, and so I actually can see the way he's hold. He shows us how to hold the brush for this particular letter, and um, also um, the other thing I've noticed that this is actually at this this axis is a 30 degrees it's a 30 degree axis which is a pretty steep axis but as reference you can either have some kind of a protractor or triangle that it, that's adjustable to get your 30 degrees just to just to help lock yourself into that 30 degrees and you can just strike lines through um, if, you know, just to keep you on that 30 degree uh, direction, um, or you could cut out a piece of cardboard and just cut one edge, the corner edge at 30 degrees, and that way you can just go bang, bang, bang and just do a bunch of lines through it so that you'll always keep on that 30 degree axis. Getting organized for lettering is so important. Um, I like to have everything where I need it, when I need it, ready to go in little squirt bottles and really convenient. I put my little quarter pints, uh, I have these little eye bolts that I put through it so that, and a, and a 3 8 uh, nut inside, which turns it into a rattle can. So you can hear it in there. And that stirs, that knocks all that solids down, uh, it blends it all in nicely. And then I have my Dixie cups, uh, non-waxed. And then I like to, um, Cut a bunch of them so that just the, this top edge right here, so that gives a nice sharp edge right there for your brush when you go to uh, palette it right there. It gives a nice clean sharp edge and I'll be using the Steve Kafka lettering quill. This is a number four that I'll be using and um, it's a really good brush and it's very very close to a show card brush in, in the way it feels and the way it it's it's stiff but not too stiff and it doesn't flop around like a quill does so it's a really super nice brush I definitely recommend it this is a good size to start with yeah, like a two and a four those are really good brushes to to start out with because those would be really good utility brushes uh, for lettering and I just love the way these things work and then w what I do is uh, just you know pour some pour a little one-shot lettering enamel into your cup and I have a little paper towel mealy right here so I can keep, keep things clean. And then I use a flow enhancer, the one shot, uh, 6000 flow enhancer uh, versus thinners and uh, turpentines and uh, lacquer thinners because it keeps the uh, quality of the paint that I want and yet it still reduces it so it flows really nice. And those other things dry, I noticed, much quickly, much more quickly than Flow Enhancer. And I mix it to the point where it just starts to drip, just starts to drizzle like that. And that seems to be like a really good consistency. Uh, too thin and it'll drip all over your project panel. And too thick, you'll be frustrated. It'll skip, your edges will be all rough, and it won't, it won't flow well. And... Uh, I always clean my brush out like about every 15-20 minutes. I clean it out with a little cup of lacquer thinner uh, to and get all the paint out of the heel of the, the brush uh, because it starts gumming up in there, right there, and that's where all the frustration happens. You start it, after about 15-20 minutes, the one shot starts to um, to gum up right in there at the heel of the brush, and it, that's that's where that's where our trouble begins. So I always just stop. And, and clean it and uh, I'm a glove person um, so I like to keep all these chemicals out of my liver um, and so that's why I glove up and then also I use a cotton glove and, and because I'm a mall stick I'm a mall stick person too so um, 
So my mall stick is a flat one. It's about 30 inches long and it has a uh, tape on the end with some sh elect electrician's uh, shrink tubing around it. You heat up with a heat gun and then I cut it flat. It's about hmm, maybe about almost three-eighths thick by about an inch wide. It's, this is solid walnut. I found a re real straight piece at the box store and then I also contoured the end of it down here to fit all my fingers be so it doesn't cut into my hand and uh, you know because around a round mall stick obviously is a lot easier because on your hand because it's nice and round and smooth so there's no issues but for me I like the flat mall stick because of the ability to slide my hand around and that's the reason for the glove sliding my hand around like this and it's and it acts almost just like a surface of a table so but it also keeps my hand up off the project panel and then I have a um, I have this I have this here little pallet system where my thumb goes in through here a little bit of reducer or thinner uh, will go in here and then my, I cut this out for my uh, cup to fit right inside of there like that. And then I have uh, three by five, basically cards or magazines for palleting. But most of my palleting happens right on this edge. And you can just do such. And then I just put my mall stick into this hand. And now I have everything. So I had to put a little notch right there so it goes around. And now I have everything. And this can move all over the place. I can move up and I can move this up and down. Having your guidelines, these two guidelines, meaning the top and the bottom of your project, um, having the center of those guidelines at the base of your neck like that is a perfect height for lettering especially when you're using the three finger method and you're looking over the top of it to make these strokes. It's, it seems to be a perfect height and location for doing both the ascender and the descender strokes because if your project, if your guidelines were too high, say up here, it becomes very difficult not only to see but to execute the strokes comfortably. The important thing is to be comfortable when you're doing this and also if they're too low your arm and shoulder action get too low too and it's very difficult to execute the strokes especially swooping uh, tapered strokes so if, when at all possible if you can make your cent the center of your two guidelines at the base of your neck that's a real good place to be dialed in and once you're all comfortable and set up you just go ahead and you pallet your brush right on the edge of that cup that's been trimmed you can get a nice nice real sweet blade on the end of your brush really sharp point chiseled edge and then with the with the mall stick the way it is I can travel all the way all around on it and also up and down as well so Yeah, see, I should have loaded up again and make it all the way. With lettering enamels, you can you 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 have a only certain distance you can go. But you'll get it, you get it, and you come around. And always palette between strokes, whatever you do, because that's very important. You got to have a chiseled edge for every stroke. After you spend about 15-20 minutes, then you get a clean rag and have a, some kind of squirt bottle of, of lacquer thinner because uh, paint thinner won't, won't cut it. Lacquer thinner is the best thing. It cuts it. And then just wipe it off. You just have to make sure you use the clean part of the rag. But it's a great way to just be able to sit down and go to work without having to do a bunch of lines and and you can use this over and over again water based um, lettering is a whole different um, 
in the sense of viscosity speaking, it's a whole different uh, ball game because number one, it's it, the viscosity is much thinner with water-based poster paints, things like that, and you're able to letter up much, much more quickly as well. And you don't have to have a setup thing like this, but for practice purposes, uh, this it's a great way to uh, to really dial in the um, the lettering form and shape. And so what I did was I just put this this thing. You can kind of see what's going on here. It's just basically I just took a bunch of scrap wood and made this contraption so I can tear things off like. That. And it's a big roll of uh, tracing paper. So now I can take this page, slide it underneath this, sort of, let me pull this down a little further, and slide this underneath this, like that, and I'm ready to go. I can start lettering, boom, like that. And um, same thing here with this as far as where to put this in, in the direction of the lower nape of your neck, or not the nape, but the front part of your neck. And then um, it's already got the guidelines, it's got the letters. I mean, the whole goal is to make practicing easy to do. Because if it isn't, we're not going to practice. <laughs> you know, we're just going to, we're going to, um, we're going to do something else besides practice. So the whole goal is to make it super convenient and easy. You can say, oh, all I have to do is just grab a Tupperware full of, little Tupperware container full of paint. In this case, this is black cell vinyl used for animating. And you can get this um, online from a store in LA. And it's really super good. It's, uh, I use this as an all-purpose. They have black, white, and a few primary colors. Um, but for doing any outlining or lettering, this stuff is amazing. It dries really fast, so you've got to watch out with your brush. And then I use these uh, Utrecht brushes, and there's got a whole series of them. And in this case, I'm going to use an eighth inch. And it's the, it's the Utrecht 230 Sablette. Now, I will say that... Um, the these letters right here that are in this book were done using uh, water-based paint, show card paint, and a red sable sablet brush, po uh, a show card brush. So there's a big difference between uh, executing letters with water-based show card colors on poster board or paper and one-shot lettering enamel on substrate. There's just a, they're, it's, they're two different animals. Uh, you can still execute the, the letters the same way, but you're going to be a lot slower when it comes to this just because of the viscosity of the paint of uh, one-shot lettering enamel. So with this, is a great way to just, uh, you know, at night, instead of, you know, looking at Facebook or whatever, YouTube videos, just sit here and just letter. Just do this over and over and over. Do all these letters over and over. This is the only way, the only way that you're going to get these letters nailed. Um, and, and this is a great way because it's so easy and you don't have to have a system. Just roll some tracing paper over this and just start going. You know, just the, the goal is just to get the, the letter form. Now I'm going too fast probably, but you get the idea. And that's what you do. You just sit here and you just do this, you know. You start out doing it pretty neat because you want to you want to do an accurate job. But I'm just showing you how I'm just showing you how to use this this system and just 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 to get yourself organized and you know we're not getting into the letters right now so that's that's the idea and you just you can just sit here and do this for like 45 minutes a night do a couple of these you know a couple of these pages and then when you're you know when you're set your stuff down when you're ready to go you can move it down up you can roll this up or down or just or you don't even have to have this you can just have this page on another piece of paper you know on the but something where you're comfortable and you can and you can work well 
that's the most important thing is to get yourself comfortable and in a position where you can where you can uh, letter well. So talking about the difference between the pencil method of holding the brush and the three fingered method of holding the brush is this that the pencil method which is pretty much like this uh, is very very restricting especially when it comes to lettering anything and this actually Mike Stevens goes over this in the video um, and particularly trying to execute this script is as far as I'm concerned impossible <laughs> because even if I got close I mean that's You know, that's hard versus the three finger method, method, which is holding the brush with these three fingers perpendicular to the surface of your project. So in other words, this right now I'm, I'm perpendicular. And there are times where, you, where you're going to be flexing back and forth. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to be starting out perpendicular versus pretty much at a 45 degrees. So this will give you a lot more control when lettering. And I, this is the only way I letter anything, anytime, anywhere um, at all now that I've adapted, you know, I've been doing it for decades and I've just adapted this method. And this, in, ex in executing letters this way, with the three fingers, you know, you're resting on this, and with with the water base, I, you know, I'm obviously not using a mall stick. I'm just resting on the surface of the substrate, whatever I'm using, poster board paper, whatever it is, and then there's just much, so much more control. Than, than with the pencil method. And it goes for, you know, just for pretty much every stroke, just the entire alphabet can be done with this, with this method. And this is just a Utrex watercolor brush. It's a number six. Or, yeah, I guess it's six. Anyway, so that's the difference between lettering with the, with the uh, pencil versus the pencil versus the three-fingered method. The three-fingered method, you can you can also twist it. You can spin it, spin the brush clockwise or counterclockwise. And that's huge, especially when it comes to this particular letter. I mean, you can just, you know, make super tight radiuses. You know, and, and So on. So, so the basic stroke, the basic stroke for this alphabet, and I'm just going to show it first with uh, water base, cell vinyl. Is down an arc spin counterclockwise and as soon as you get to the bottom spin back clockwise again so that's that's what's called the basic stroke of this alphabet 
the basic spro stroke being from from here to there well basically to there so it's this point right here at the bottom basic stroke being this clock counterclockwise clockwise up and over down counterclockwise clockwise so basically as soon as you get to the base as you're spinning counterclockwise as soon as you get to the baseline start spinning clockwise and that makes that thin stroke that's the basic stroke of this alphabet down counterclockwise clockwise then the beginning of all the capitals in other words the main stroke of a capital let's say that this was a capital B it starts out going in the direction of the stroke and so what that means is the brush is parallel with the direction of the stroke the strokes going and then when you get to the bottom you spin clockwise like that that allows you to round that off and make a really nice finish on the bottom. And then at the top, it gets capped off horizontal. That's if you want this to be, you know, a, a nice, a nicely executed letter. You know, if you're going for a fine finish touch type thing. So horizontal on the top, and then this curved. Mm, I don't know what this degree is, but it's just a nice it's just a nice curve. And then the bottoms of the lowercase strokes get the same treatment as that. So let's say that this was an M, a lowercase M. Then the tops are not made horizontal, but this is, follows the axis, spin clockwise, and then sometimes it just rounds itself off. Depends on how much paint you have on your brush. And then it makes a really nice stroke at the bottom. And then the, the M sometimes will have this little whip like that, which is kind of a little extra touch. So I like to lay out all my guidelines, um, even when I'm practicing a letter, uh, to make sure that you know I keep everything on the right track, right spacing, things like that. So um, what I do is I usually start out obviously with you know the first sentence line above and this is the top guideline and this is the bottom guideline and then I, I just call this the secondary line because this is where um, the top of the lowercase letters end and I usually am about especially for this uh, letter probably about 70 percent or 75 percent up you know from the base to this it looks a lot better than than being too too low and where the where the letters are where the capital letters are, are huge. I mean, it's, you can play around with it, but this, this, is, this is what I prefer. And then, and then below that is the descender line for things like P's, lowercase p, lowercase q, lowercase y, those kinds of things. And then th that will also be the top of the next line. So that way I'm just you know, repeating these, these double lines all the way down at the page when I'm practicing. And I would go ahead and just lay out um, your letters even if you're practicing um, it's just a really good habit number one it keeps you on track as far as the letter form and number two when you're doing a project you're gonna have to lay it out anyway because um, you need to where you need to know where you're gonna end up you know starting end up so it's just good practice to just say well I'm just gonna you know this will be my capital A and lowercase a and you know capital B and say and this is where this is where it's all going to fit and you know and there we go so um it just it's a good habit because then it you know also keeps your your italic in the right going in the right direction because these are italicized letters and uh, that way there when it comes to practice or doing executing especially when you're doing a project because um one of the biggest 
problems is misspelling words because we're concentrating on executing the letter and not so much um, the what we're you know what we're spelling out. So if you if you can free yourself by laying it out, it's much better. You just say, okay, well you know here's my A. Counterclockwise, clockwise. You see, now you got your lines to follow, and you don't have to follow them perfectly, but because you you're, you've got the letter form in your in your mind, so you know what you're doing. And the less you have to try to try to think, and the more you can just concentrate on the letter form, the better you'll be.